Hey guys, welcome to another segment of Dear Mo. This is where you ask and we answer. Now, if you guys have any questions, just put them in the comments below, but even better, you'll see a link and it will lead you to a form. In that form, don't worry. You don't have to submit your email. You don't have to subscribe to anything. You're simply just putting in your questions there so that we have a place to go to every time. It makes it so much simpler for us. And we don't wanna miss your questions. So that's really the best way to do it. Now, let's get started. So our first question today is, hiya, hello. Um, I've heard I need to do video, but I don't know what I should be talking about. How do you pick your topics? Now, I love what Tessa says, so I'm gonna leave that for her, but I'll tell you how I also pick my topics. And I typically, I look at what my brand is about. All of us should know what our brand is. What's the stories that we tell? How do we want people to feel? Um, what do we wanna be known for? That's typically like at the, at the very top, right? So if I want to be known for brain science, habits, and coaching, then those are the things that I almost always revert back to. Now, when you dive into that, Tessa has some great things that she would give you. And that's usually what I use um, in terms of those topics. But you want to know what is it that you're known for and stick with those. Now, I think it can be hard for people because they want to go all over the place and be all knowing. And in reality, if you're known for everything, then you're not really a rock star in anything. So make sure that you become a rock star in the things that you want to be a rock star in first. And then as you grow your audience, as you create that um, like, no, no like and trust factor, now you can start to add things, right? But it should always start with what are the things you want to be known for. Now, some things that you can do are what are some myths? right? You can also, if you can't think of anything, I often will go into my freebies and I'll pull something out of a freebie or a training that I've done and I'll go into that. I might just go into one of the things or I might do a deep dive and be like, and then join me tomorrow for my next blah, 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 whatever it is, right? So those are ways that you can do it as well. You don't need to reinvent the wheel, but if you're really stumped, then I would tell you to go to search engines. You can go to Facebook um, groups, ones that have your people in it, and you can see what are the questions that are being asked. Or you can go to things like, I can't say, right? Quora, Quora, whatever. <laughs> and you can look at what questions are being asked in your field. And that's a great way as well to come up with topics and see what's trending and what people want to know without you necessarily having to figure it out. You can also ask your people what they right? want to know, just like we asked you guys the questions. <laughs> That's the same way, right? So you can ask people for their feedback and then all of a sudden we have this dear most segment for you all. So it's I'm going to push it over to Tessa now because she's got some great feedback on this. Well, the funny thing is Kai, she actually didn't mention this as much, but she always goes with the end game too. Like what is the oh, yeah. end result that you really want to accomplish? So I forgot about the way you want to be known for, honestly. And that's a great tip because <laughs> you can really fine tune it. Um, and keep in mind along that line, uh, some people say, I feel like a broken record because I'm putting out the same type of information. Um, Kai had a couple ways for you to kind of twist that and I'm going to add a couple more to it. But remember that 4% of your target audience is 4% uh, of your audience is on social media at any given time. So you might feel like a broken record, but it's, they're not all there listening and watching yeah. and attentively sitting at the window waiting for you. They're not, or their phone for that matter. Um, they are they're You know, you only, only so many people are going to see that. So you can post the same things more often, but you mentioned, um, you know, the myths in the industry, this is a great one. Like what 10, I always say to my clients, like what 10 questions do people most ask you? So it's like a frequently asked question. You can answer those and those are easy and it's still on the same topic, but it's like important information that they need to know. And then the 10 questions that they should be asking. So because most people think that they're just going to go to a web designer. I might say, um, you know, the question that they should be asking is, is that person a designer or a developer, <laughs> you know, and there's a difference between the two. And most people don't know that yet. They wouldn't even know to ask that question. So, you know, there might be something that, you know, your expertise, you can teach people that that gap where they're, they don't know what they don't know yet. So I love that. And the myths are awesome because they're more of a connection. Plus you can, 
I love Kai's like reversal, thought reversals. Thought reversal. <laughs> it's not mine. It's a technique, but yeah. It's something that she mentions and I just love. And that's, that's kind of like that you, uh, the opposite of what the myth is. So can you explain that real quick? Cause I love that. Mm, yeah. It's a thought so reversal is typically like a statement that is the opposite of what most people believe. So let's say that everyone says you have to be in social media everywhere right? In order for you to build a business. Then you have somebody like David Bear, and you probably see his ads all the time. And what does he say in his ads? He talks about the exact opposite. He says, you can build a business without ever being on social media. That's like his thought reversal, right? So he is, so who does he speak to? He speaks to the people who aren't wanting to be all over social media in order to build their business. He's speaking to the people who are frustrated by social media and still want to build their business. He's speaking to those people through that thought reversal. The people who are like, is there any other way? Yes, there is. And then he raises his hand and everyone comes. So think of it that way. That's what a thought reversal does. It gives people a ray of hope who are looking for it. Right. The right That's target audience. Cause he's clear yeah. on who he wants. He doesn't want the people who are exactly. all over social media with that, <laughs> with that statement. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the other thing that I do is look on social media or look on um, the search engine. So when you do a search in Google, you can see how many people are searching for mm -hmm. uh, a specific topic or a question or even just a phrase, right? So building mm -hmm. in what people are actually searching for is really important. We have a tool called keywords everywhere, which I'll put into the chat when this goes live and uh, that that is actually uh it lets you see how many people what your competitors are in that keyword phrase and um you know what your ranking is as far as how complicated that's going to be to get that that advertising spot and that's just on google but that applies to a lot of the you know it's it's the bigger picture it's the whole so you might be using the wrong keywords if you're if you know what keywords you need to be using then you're going to get the search results that you really want so i always add that extra little nerdy part in there <laughs> <laughs> and you're um and then also on um, you know be real be i think kai talked about this too your story well start with your story what's your personal experiences yeah. um you know a testimonials from people are great to put up or even interview mm -hmm. like Kai and I are doing right now, get a customer, a past customer of yours on and, and talk about what it was like to work with you or what challenges they had, make it into a case study, you know? So those are really good things to put out that you're all on the same topic. You're not changing anything. You're just giving lots of variations of the, yes. of the content. Yeah. And if we're going to be like, if you want to get like super nitty gritty strategic, I'll just Put this out there because this is how I think. But if I, I have a calendar on my wall, I have all the months there. And what I do is I sit down and I first I have like it's 12 months, like so January, February, March, whatever. You guys can do this on your own piece of paper. And then I put what promotions are coming up, like things that I'm going to be a part of if I'm being on, if I'm going to be on somebody else's podcast, if I'm going to whatever it is, and I lay it out for the year and I always add to it. But what I use that for is then I will then sprinkle those things into what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Like she said, I always look ahead so that I'm bringing people down a journey, right? So if I know that I'm going to be on a podcast for uh, moms who want to start their own side hustle, something like that, then I might start talking about the side hustle. And I might start talking about mom. I mean, I always talk about being a mom because it's frustrating and I am one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's the best thing ever, I swear. But um, so I will start to sprinkle those things in and I'll mention like, oh my gosh, when I had this interview and then I'll keep going. But when you look at your monthly calendar, what you can then do is you can sprinkle it in throughout the month. Like there are four things that I want to be known for. Okay, great talk about them over and over again and about yourself right mm -hmm. and then it's not like one two three four myself one two three four myself just sprinkle it throughout the month come up with five things for each topic and then put it out randomly or be very strategic like hey i know that this is going to come out on sunday so i'm going to start talking about it last week wednesday then sun you know what i mean whatever it is but that is a really great way to give yourself some content and with that feels more um, strategic, I guess you could say, rather than just throwing things on the wall. That being said, it is okay to throw things on the wall. So, uh, but I know for me, I need a strategy. So I'm just sharing that with you guys. That, but I guarantee you a lot of the people I follow don't have a strategy. 
but they know what they're talking about. They know what they're experts in. And that's what they always talk about. Yep. Right. And it's, so, o- it's okay to try yeah. something out. Like Kai said, try like, I know that video can be really intimidating to people, especially if you're going live, if you're doing a recorded and zoom and you have a chance to, you know, think about it and kind of hit stop and play. I mean, the, the thing is that you just have to try it. It's going to get easier. The more you do it, the, the easier it's going to be, the better you're going to look at the camera. You're going to figure out where your eyes need to go. Everything's going to start clicking, but it takes time and you have to keep trying it. So don't give up just after the first couple and you feel embarrassed. I think my first video, I was red during the whole thing, like bright red. In fact, I wish I had my first video. It literally was on Snapchat is where I went live. And I did my very first video and I was petrified. I almost like couldn't talk. That's how bad it was. (laughs) So just know that you have to do it. You have to do it somewhere. And so you can do it early on and or create a test account where you're going to try these things out and practice things, you know, whether it's putting a video up and there's lots of things that you can get help with people are here like us to, you know, help you with getting past that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And just do it and copy us or tag us so that we can support you and say, congratulations. <laughs> yes, please do. Now let's move on to our last question of the session. And it is this, it says, hi ladies, I just did a launch and I went with a show up everywhere on social media strategy. (laughs) I know one of those. (laughs) I had people sign up for the webinar, but no one uh, from the webinar signed up for my course. Then on the last day, the cart was open. I got three people um, who signed up. Any suggestions on a better strategy or what I should be thinking about? Is it okay if I start with this one? Yes, go for it. Okay. This is what I would tell you guys. Um, strategies work for everyone if it's right for you so it isn't necessarily about the strategy but it could be that you're not being consistent you're not doing all the things you're supposed to do or maybe you just haven't given it enough time okay so the one thing that drives me bonkers is when i see somebody do a strategy throw their hands up it didn't work and walk away. That's not how it works. Strategies are so, um, they're so much more complex than just like, okay, I did this. It worked. It didn't work. There's so many pieces that go into it. Like the content, the sequencing, the, the freebie, the, all of these things that you can't just be like, Oh no, the strategy didn't work. So then how do we fix that? This is the second thing I would say is the most important thing to think about is the data. You need to watch the data. So for example, let's use a super simple strategy. Okay. Let's say that people go to my freebie and then they become up. They, uh, from the freebie, they go onto my email list on the email list. I have an ask. And from that ask, I, you know, do a sell or whatever. Okay. Right. So let's say four sets. So then I'm going to look at where are people coming in and where are they dropping off? So, I can tell you when we did a challenge, the very first time that we did a challenge, I was so sad because I went to go and look right at my freebie and I could see the page and I can see how many hundreds of people came to the landing page and how only like 15, 20 people um, actually clicked the link. So that doesn't mean my strategy didn't work, especially since that's just the first part of my strategy. What it meant is that I had to fix my content, right? Mm -hmm. The uh, message, I guess you could say. And so that's the first thing I would say is you've got to focus on the data every step of the way. Yeah. Anything you want to add? Yeah, well, I think you did a great job explaining everything. So everything Kai said. (laughs) Um, I I also think that a lot of the time... um, like you said, messaging, it's imagery, it's the video. Did you add, is there enough of a relationship being built in that process? And the other thing is that people wait until the last minute for almost everything. So like, I really don't think that, you know, if people, if the numbers were still really good and you're in it, just that they waited until the end, then that's maybe not the best example of 
them it not working just because they, I mean, some have to have timers it, specifically, they won't take action until it's like five minutes until it's like closed. So mm -hmm. um, I do think that you can take a look at that and kind of understand human behavior and also understand that like the ways that we typically market to people, we're using email, which is extremely hard to get any attention in. So even that your spam, you're ending up in spam 90% of the time, I swear. It's like everybody is seeing lower and lower delivery rates. So think about maybe tying in SMS or texting or messenger bots in Facebook, which have a better delivery and open rate. And that, then it's not as much a barrier of like, well, you got lost in the email, you know, or they didn't whitelist you or whatever. So um, just think about it as maybe it's your method, delivery method needs to be changed so that it, you're getting that attention that you need. And people need reminders. So if you do one thing and you don't have any other nurture, even if you have the email sequence, let's say do a retargeting ad midway to make sure that you're staying top of mind so that you're, somebody thinks about you again, like, oh, I did go to that. You know, we had so many people come, well, maybe they just didn't feel like committing to the challenge or they were going to go check their calendar. Who knows? I mean, it, have to say that as soon as we added video on the page, that made a big difference. <laughs> and yes, we played, we know there's little things like, did they need more explanation? Did they need more benefits? Did they need a better yeah. form? Do they need to see the team? You know, whatever it is mm -hmm. that's going to help them make their decision. So I just have to say that, you know, to keep tweaking and thank yeah. goodness we did because we came up with a whole different version of our chat. I mean, it's a totally cool awesome way to connect with our audience that we would never have come up with if we hadn't had that one not so great challenge. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. So all of that comes back down to data, right? So right. we tweak, we look at the numbers, we tweak, we look at the numbers, but don't change your strategy altogether because then you're not going to know what actually worked and what didn't. So I would encourage you, give yourself some time on the strategy, give yourself whatever amount of time, maybe I'll do it four times, maybe I'll do it for three months, whatever you want, like pick a number, stick with it, and then start re start looking at the data and then tweaking from there, right? Because that's yep. really the only way for us to figure out. There is no such thing as one size fits all. Even if something fits me for the most part, I might have to like, you know, maybe tie it right here or whatever that is. And that's the same thing with strategies. So, okay. Like Thank you guys so much for joining us for this segment. And we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.